Come join us today from the floor of the 2017 North American International Auto Show in Detroit. We'll be covering all the latest reveals and be talking to the people that help bring them to life. So check out our website, Autoline.tv, throughout the afternoon, as well as our YouTube channel for all the latest updates. On today's show, the automotive industry can save billions by harmonizing standards, Ford experiments with collaborative robotics, and why connected vehicles will make today's cars look dumb. All that and more coming right up on AutoLine Daily. This is AutoLine Daily, the show for enthusiasts of the automotive industry. Europe and the United States could save billions if they harmonize their automotive regulations, according to a study by the Center for Automotive Research in Ann Arbor. The study was conducted for the Alliance of Automotive Manufacturers. It estimates that common regulations could cut costs by $800 to over $1,000 per vehicle that is exported to another market. Today, automakers have to use different materials and tooling to bring their cars into compliance. For example, they have to use different windshield wipers, reflectors, headlamps, airbags, and even trunk releases. Put it all together and those regulatory differences cost over $2 billion every year. The Alliance of Automotive Manufacturers is using this study to push the passage of TTIP. That's the Transatlantic Trade and Investment Partnership that's currently being negotiated between the U.S. and the EU. To understand what's going on in the automotive industry, you really know, need to know the terminology that's being used. And these days, there can be some confusion when it comes to autonomous cars. In the past, we always used the terminology from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration that runs from level zero to level four, with zero being the equivalent of a Model T to four being a fully autonomous car like Google is testing. But now the agency is using terminology from the Society of Automotive Engineers, and that runs from level zero to level five. In fact, the SAE even has a standard for this, J3016. It's a bit more detailed than NHTSA's rankings, with level three being a semi-autonomous car, like you can get in a Mercedes S-Class. Level four is a car with fully autonomous capability, but still comes with a steering wheel and you can drive it. Level five is a fully autonomous car where you do not need a driver at all. We think it's important to review these different standards because the SAE standard is now what the industry is using. Still to come, a new EGR valve from Borg Warner shows just how complex the modern car has become. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires, your journey, our passion. Dow Automotive Systems, advanced materials that deliver better results. And by Lear, a global leader in automotive seating and electrical systems. The general public doesn't appreciate the scale of the automotive industry or how complex the modern automobile has become. For example, take a look at this picture of an EGR valve. Doesn't look like much, does it? But when you look at this animation of all the parts that go into this valve, you start to appreciate how much science and engineering is needed to make it. The valve takes in exhaust gas at 875 degrees Celsius, cools it down to 150 degrees, and precisely recirculates it back into the engine. That lowers combustion temperatures, which can reduce carbon monoxide, NOx, and particulates. It also allows for a leaner mixture, which improves fuel economy by 3%. This particular exhaust gas recirculation valve is made by Borg Warner for the Hyundai Ionic and the Kia Nero Hybrid. And again, it's a great example of how much science and engineering goes into every part and component on today's cars. Speaking of sophisticated vehicles, supplier Delphi thinks that future connected cars will make today's cars seem dumb by comparison. The average premium car today operates with over 100 million lines of code. That's about four times more than what they use in a jet fighter. But in the 2020 time frame, Delphi believes connected cars will operate with over 200 billion lines of code. To support that, data speeds in cars will have to increase over 2,000% using high-speed Ethernet. 
Power will go from 12 volts up to 600 volts, and that'll require a mile more of wiring, an additional 70 connections, and 700 more diagnostic parameters. That's going to require a centralized brain or supercomputer that can make decisions 34,000 times faster than a human. Coming up next, a look at some new manufacturing techniques from Ford and BMW. Lear Connexus is the new application suite in vehicle connectivity designed to deliver over-the-air software updates and more from Lear Corporation's eSystems, leaders in power and data management. Whether it's on television, online, or through social media, AutoLine knows how to effectively get your marketing message to the people you want to reach. Contact Stacy Eman today. The robots used in assembly plants are huge, powerful machines. They can be so dangerous that they have to be fenced off and guarded by light curtains. Those light curtains, or light sensors, will immediately shut down the robot if someone goes into the fenced off area. But now there's a new kind of smaller robot, one that's so sensitive, it'll stop moving as soon as you touch it, even if you only use a finger. They call this collaborative robotics, where robots can work safely in conjunction with human beings. Ford may be the first automaker to use collaborative robotics. At its assembly plant in Cologne, Germany, it's experimenting with two collaborative robots, or cobots, to install shock absorbers in Fiestas. Ford is working with KUKA, the German robot company, and says this will not replace any humans in the plant. Well, maybe for now that's true. These robots typically cost about $45,000 installed, programmed, and ready to go, so they pay for themselves in less than a year. Many manufacturing experts believe that collaborative robotics will end up replacing a lot of people. Like any good that's manufactured, cars rolling down the assembly line are subject to quality checks. In the past, when it came to measuring body panels, that meant pulling them off the line, clamping them in jigs, and manually measuring every single dimension. In some cases, parts of the car had to be ripped apart to test them. But now BMW has a much simpler and faster solution. It's testing out a fully automated optical measuring cell that uses non-contact sensors to scan the car. Then they use that to make a 3D model accurate to within microns. This allows barely visible deviations to be identified at an early stage. The data can then be used to make sure the manufacturing process maintains statistical control. BMW will first use this to make the next generation 5 Series. And with that, we come to the end of today's report. Thanks for watching and have a great day.